Uh, we look forward to hearing from Jane and her explanation and thoughts today. So Jane, unmute and it's all yours. Good morning, everyone. I'm trying to look at both my notes and uh, the Hollywood Square version of church. So uh, I'm, I like looking at everybody's faces. There you are, Karen. <laughs> My favorite thing to do when I preach is to look into the congregation and see everybody. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to go through and watch you as you watch me. It's bizarre church, but we'll do this anyway. I too have been thinking about what it means to understand the kingdom of heaven. And my thoughts always go back to the symbol of our church. I think of my childhood and, and Harold House always um, having those wonderful pins and, and magnets and things with the little, the little boy leading the lion and the lamb. So I went to that scripture, Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. And the interesting thing about that scripture is it actually never actually says the lion is lying down with the lamb. <laughs> Instead, it has images like the wolf lives with the lamb, the lion doesn't eat the calf, the nursing child shall play near the home of the asp, and the little, sh the little child shall lead them. And what's interesting about all of those images is they are all images of peace. And our church has always promoted peace. And so when I think of the kingdom of heaven, I think of what would it be to make peace, to be a peacemaker and to find peace for myself. And of course, right now, whenever we are watching our TVs or looking at our Facebooks or whatever we're doing to watch the world, it's, ever, it's anything but peaceful. And we seem to always be finding anger and agitation and fear and sorrow in our world. So I believe this is a time more than any other that we need to find peace, that we need to be peacemakers and work for the peaceable kingdom. And so when I'm looking at the scriptures and I'm looking at my own life, I first need to find peace for myself. And so there are three assignments I gave to myself, and I would like to give those same assignments to you. The first one I've already talked about is find, a, find the symbols in your life that mean peace. So the lion and the lamb and the little boy Find something, either, you know, a statue in your home or just a picture. So many of us have those, that symbol in our home. Or the symbol of, of Jesus laughing and smiling with the children. That's another symbol for me that I, I like to look at to find peace. And we need to sit and meditate and live with those symbols a little bit to actually stop, stop looking at our TVs, stop looking at our Facebook, stop talking to each other and sit in silence with those symbols to find what they mean to us, what it means for our relationships with each other and with ourselves and to find peace in that way. So that's assignment number one is find a symbol of peace that will help you find peace in your life and just take a moment to sit with that a little bit. Then the next, the next lesson for myself, and I always start with a lesson for myself and then share it with others, is to find scriptures or words, something that you can read and contemplate on. Scriptures are easy to do that with. So I'll share a few of mine with you. 
I found Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And I always think of that, that psalm and that song when I read that scripture. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And finally, for the lesson from today, Matthew 13, verses 31 through 52, I kind of liked the, the very last sentence of the scripture. And it, and it says, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. As you can tell, that scripture kind of spoke to me on several different levels. And I like that I, could, I might be able to be one of those teachers of the law who has become a disciple. I might be one of those owners of a home who can look in my storeroom and bring, in, bring out new treasures as well as old. And when I think of those treasures, I think of those treasures of peace, those, those peaceful things in my life to give myself peace and those things that I'm hoping will give others peace too. The kingdom of heaven, what is it like? Ron has already shared the part of the scripture that is part of our lesson. And the only thing I would like to add to these stories that are so well known to us, these parables, the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast and the treasure in the field, is when I was looking at these scriptures, I noticed that what Jesus was saying to everyone was describing the kingdom of heaven. And a lot of people have put the words, the word faith into what the kingdom of heaven means, that you have to have faith like the, like the mustard seed. Um, faith is like yeast. But my exercise for myself and what I would like to suggest to you is that we can also put the word peace when we are thinking of the kingdom of heaven. So as I read these scriptures this time, think of a peaceable kingdom. Think, think of what it means. Sorry, that's my dog. Think of what it means to have peace in our lives and spread peace with these scriptures. So first of all, though it is the smallest of all seeds, the mustard seed, when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. How that translates so well into the peaceable kingdom. For, for yeast, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour. I would say men and women need to do that together until it worked all through the dough. So think about what that would take for yeast to work through 60 pounds of flour and what also that means for peace in our world if we worked that hard on the dough. And the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Finally, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. What we would do for peace, the joy we would find in our lives whenever we search and search for peace and then we find it and it is a treasure to us. 
So I really like those scriptures in the context of the theme of peacemaking. So that's our second lesson, to find a scripture of your own, find some wonderful books or, or poems or whatever you can find that bring you peace. Because peace right now is something that we all need personally and then we all need to share. Then my final lesson, and it actually fits very well into the first song that we heard, that was beautiful. Thank you, Sharon, for finding that. How can we keep from singing? This is something that's really hard for me because as everyone knows, I love to sing. I love choirs, I love my flute. Charles Athey called me yesterday to play my flute in church and I'm real worried that the flute is, the, is actually the worst instrument in pandemics because <laughs> I blow all and everything out. <laughs> so violins and pianos are much safer than my flute, but maybe I can do it on Zoom church. But I was thinking, of course, of my favorite hymns and favorite songs. And I think I already told you guys, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a, a very short version of the story of my nephew and niece singing to my parents for their 60th anniversary. And Connor was on the guitar and, and uh, Danielle actually had her cello and they were singing. And one of those songs, was one of dad's favorite tunes. And um, what, was, what was fun about that day was that once we started singing, we couldn't stop. And we probably sang in mom and dad's home for two hours. And that's, that's how I felt, Ron. We could not keep from singing. That kind of song is what we all crave right now what we miss with each other. We all know this. I don't like sitting on a computer, nobody does. But I think what we need to do is we, not, we need to find peace anyway. We can find it with each other when we speak together and we can find it in, in, our, in the words that we find and then we can find it in song. And of course, my favorite song is hymn 389, This Is My Song. And I, I want to tell people a couple of reasons why it's my favorite song. There's a meme that I found on Facebook that says, with the right music, you either forget everything or you remember everything. So when I hear my mother play the piano, when we hear Brad Athey play his violin, I can forget everything and find peace in that music. But then the other, the other way songs help us is that they help us remember everything. And the song of, of This Is My Song is from Sibelius's Finlandia. And the reason why that means so much to me is that I was having a very tumultuous, tumultuous year in Finland when I was a senior in high school. And my Finnish family took me to Helsinki and we walked through Finlandia House. And I was able to see and hear and understand who John Sibelius was. And that particular song was written during a time when Russia was oppressing them and he had very tumultuous opening music. But then what happens is the tumultuous music, it, it, it falls into that beautiful melody, that serenity of the melody that we all sing in the song of This Is My Song. And so it was a symbol to the Finnish people of the struggles against the Russian rule and then that beautiful melody symbolized hope and resolution and peace. And so that music first touched me. And when I got back to the States and went to Graceland and I, I felt peace again and had, my, had wonderful people around me, felt love and secure, then I found the, the, the hymn and the words, this is my song, O God of all the nations, 
a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. Oh, hear my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for la their land and for mine. So when I hear that song, when I hear those words, I think of the year that I had in Finland and how I found peace. I think of that song was actually played by a good friend of mine when, when I went to Germany and she knew it was my favorite song. So I, I was able to sit in my new home in Germany and find peace in hearing this, that song, that, that tune and those words. And so now every time I hear that song, I think of those years of mine when I lived overseas that they, I did, I struggled for peace. I didn't always feel peace, but that song always brought me peace. And to this day, it still brings me peace. Dorothy and her orchestra played that beautiful entire piece of Finlandia for us a few months ago. And Dorothy, it was absolutely awesome. And it reminded me, you know, it, it starts out so tumultuous and, and, and difficult, very difficult piece. And then it ends with that awesome, awesome melody. And, and the reason why I tell this to you today is because we all have songs like this. We all know songs that when we remember them, it transports us to the past, to our, how many high school, you know, 70s for me songs can we listen to and remember exactly where we were. And that's what music does for us. It brings us peace. It brings us into the memories that bring us peace. So this is what I would like all of us to do this week and every day. What is it going to mean to find peace in your life? Peace is turning off the news, putting down the phone, putting down Facebook, going on a walk, reading the scripture, hearing a song, singing a song, touching those things in your life and those people in your life that bring you peace. So I'd like to just end with the prayer that, that we've already heard a little bit of. We, I, it's the part that um, Karen has already given to us, but I wanted to share with you again. Lord, there are many in our world, in our country, in our communities, and even in our homes that need the peace that only Christ can bring. We know that your spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Teach us how to pray for others, search our hearts, help us in our weakness to be your hands and feet in an aching world. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. And we pray today for the peace that Christ can give us if we meditate, we sing, and we watch for peace in our own lives. Thank you.